everyone. If you are following me over on Instagram, you know that I picked up Lisa Eldridge new Seamless Skin Enhancing Tint. I also picked up two of the is it Sculpt? Yeah, they get Sculpt and Shade Lip Pencils in 0N and 1N, and we'll get into what the numbers mean. And then I also have the mascara and the liner. The liner is the Kitten Flick and the same with the mascara. I know they came out a little while ago, not too long ago. I didn't pick them up originally because I knew something else was coming, and so I thought I would just wait until we had whatever it was, which we now know is the enhancing tint. I actually have two shades that I've ordered. One shade is here. And because I know many of you are really interested in this product, what I wanted to do is show you this one today. I actually think the other shade is going to be much better for me, but I think I can still give you my thoughts about the product itself. And then you can see this shade on me and know whether or not it's something that you're even interested in. Let's talk about what it is. So again, this is the Enhancing Tint, and I want to make it really clear when we're talking about this, that's exactly what it is. This is not a foundation. This is not a tinted moisturizer. This is an Enhancing Tint. What it really means, at least in my opinion, because I've been using it for the last couple of days, is that it evens out your skin. It gives you a smoother, more neutral, <laughs> skin tone. So if you have redness like I do from rosacea or your skin's a little uneven, this is going to even it out. It reminds me, and one of my friends actually said this, uh, it reminds me a little bit of the Dolce & Gabbana Solar Power powder in a liquid form. That's what I get from it. I have used it on dry skin. I have nothing else on my skin. I have used it with moisturizer on. I have used it after using <laughs> a treatment. I have tried a whole bunch of things. And what I find works best for me, and again, I'll get into the details of the product and all that, but what I find works best for me is to use a light moisturizer on my, make sure my face is exfoliated, which is true for any like skin product, like a foundation, a tint, any of that. If your skin isn't smooth, if you haven't exfoliated, or if you have like dry patches, or you know, if your skin isn't polished, if you will, there, it does make it harder for foundation to work well because it's going to adhere to those particular spots. For me, I have normal to dry skin. A light moisturizer works well. When I had a, it wasn't a heavier moisturizer, it just had more of a serum kind of moisturizer. The skin tint, I think, didn't look as good. Again, this is my, ta my take. When I used the skin tint and my skin hadn't been exfoliated and I didn't have moisturizer on, it clung to some dry spots on my face. Not a lot, but a little bit. So the moisturizer that I've been using, this is the one skin, I talked about this in my the skincare video that I did not too long ago. I mentioned that there were a couple of new skincare things that I've been using skincare products. I use the skincare, the one skin eye cream during the day and I use, this is the moisturizer. This has replaced my La Mer pump lotion, not because I necessarily like it better, but because I ran out of it. It's the one that's in the white pump and I, it's the moisturizing lotion, soft lotion. I can't remember the name. I'll make sure I put a picture up of the one I use. I ran out of it. It's incredibly expensive. It's $300. And I only buy that when it's on sale and La Mer changed over their products. So I bought backups of the lotion, the toner and the um, oil, um, cleanser because those are gone now. I did not buy backup of the the pump moisturizer because that's still existing. And so I'm waiting for the 20% off for Sephora sale to buy it again. And I had been sent this anyway, so I started using it. And honestly, I'm not sure I'm going to buy the La Mer, to be perfectly honest, because this works really well. And my skin has looked really good and it feels moisturized, but not too much. Like during the day when I'm putting on a, 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 a foundation or a tinted moisturizer, or even when I'm not doing anything, like this works extremely well. And they reached out to me after uh, I did that video and offered a code to all of you guys. So it's Jennifer, and I'll make sure that it's down below so you know it's how it's spelled exactly with no dashes or anything else, but it's Jennifer15, and you can all get 15% off any of the products on their site. Again, I've been using this and I've been using, I'm just gonna do one pump of it. I've been using this and I've been using their eye cream. And it's a very 
light moisturizer, but it's the way that it works is it's like building up a barrier over time for your skin. So it actually, it has incremental benefits as you use it. And it works as a light moisturizer and it doesn't interfere with anything. So like it sinks into the skin, but your skin feels moisturized and hydrated. And then when you use something like this or any other product that you use, it doesn't interfere with it, which I really like. Same is true for their eye cream, by the way. Really great product. So Jennifer 15, you get 15% off. So thank you One Skin for doing that code for everybody. It's valid for two months. So we're at the end of March to the end of May. So that's how long you have, to, that's how long you have to decide to get 15% off with my code. All right, so let's talk about, as I shake this, Lisa did a video on how to use the product correctly. And she said to shake it up. There are a number of shades, 18 shades, it looks like that go, they have a neutral undertone, they have olive undertone, they have cool undertones. I'm really impressed with the different shades that she has. It is a little difficult to figure out, I think, what shade you are because yes, she does have a chart that talks about if you wear this shade in her foundation, then you, but if you're not, if you don't have her foundation or if you have her foundation, but you never really found like the perfect shade for you, then it's a little tricky. I went with two different shades. I went with T1, which is the lightest shade, and I went with T3. The T3 is not here yet. I think the T3 is gonna actually be much better for me, although this does work. So we'll get to it in a second. But it says, unique hybrid formula of the enhancing tint works to seamlessly even tone, lift shadows, tone down redness, and boost luminosity. So it's like your skin, but your skin on its best day. Ultra lightweight texture, burst of hydration, blurring pigments, all that good stuff. The, hearing, the hero ingredients in this are glycerin, uh, prickly pear, which is a vitamin E and vitamin K and has omega fat, fatty acids in it. It's sunflower seed oil squalene and cocoa caprolate, but that one I don't know, uh, naturally derived emollient, vitamin E, no fragrance, alcohol, essential oils, mineral oils, talc, parabens, microplastics, PFAs, or gluten, vegan and cruelty-free. Now, you can put this on with a brush. You can put this on with your fingers. I wouldn't really recommend putting it on with a sponge because it's meant to really be a very light coverage. Just, it's not even really meant to be coverage, if you will. I'm gonna do two drops. One, two. So the way that I have found the best way to put this on, this is just, again, yeah, this is me. I like the brush and when I put it on, with my fingers, I felt, I don't know, I just didn't like it as much. I can't tell you exactly what it was, but I liked it better with the brush. That's what I found. This is the Anissa brush. This is the Pinnacle brush. This is the brush I use. I really like this. And it's a very lightweight formula. So not only is it not really a coverage, but it's like water. And I think water is the first ingredient. I'm gonna double check that, but I'm pretty sure on the ingredient list. Ta-da! <laughs> you can see, like, it immediately evened out my skin tone. Looks really good. Looks like my skin on its best day. It's how I wish my skin would look without any makeup on all the time, because I'd love to get rid of the rosacea. And I've tried. I've, I've done lasers, and my skin's definitely better, but I still got a lot to go. So, again, I, I ordered T1. So this is T1. T1 is described, well, first of all, it's the lightest it's the lightest shade and that's the first thing. Um, you, you're gonna you're gonna be very pale if you're choosing that shade. When you look at it on my skin, I think you can see that actually it does match. Like it's not like it's not the right shade, but it washes me out a little bit. It's a neutral rosy undertone. And in these shades, the T1, the T2, and the T3, the T2 is described as a neutral golden undertone, which I'm Definitely not. The T3 is described as a neutral undertone. So I wanted to get the rosy one and the neutral one, which is why I got T1 and T3. I think the T3 is going to be better because I think this is a little light for me. So for me, I feel like this would be great for somebody who's a little bit paler than me, more of that almost like ivory, like the really the people who have really and I, it's usually somebody that I've seen. I do have some Irish heritage. 
I'm not really Irish, but I do have some. And you see those people who have the red hair and the really pale skin. Um, that would be what I think of when I see this. But it doesn't look bad. It looks close to actually my skin color, but I feel like the T3 will be more invigorating on me. I think it would, I think it'll give me more life in my skin, if you will. I think this one does wash me out a little bit. Now, under normal circumstances, if this was a foundation, I'd just be like, put on some bronzer and set. And that's actually often what I do because on many of the time, if I get a foundation that actually does match my neck and is pretty light, it does make me look a little washed out because I'm so used to seeing my skin with a little bit of redness, with a little bit of pink. So I just put that color back in with the bronzer and the, and the blush and actually it works really well. With this product, I, I really feel like this product is meant to be super light coverage. It's just a tint. It's not meant to be, it's not even meant to be a tinted moisturizer. I have tinted moisturizers that I actually love. The YSL New and the Shiseido, those are my like go-to ones. I love those both. They're fantastic. The new especially I think is really good by Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, there's a couple others that I really like, but I use those on the days that I want a little bit of coverage. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for actual foundation. The step up from that would be the Chanel Touch, which is the new one. Um, that one I think is like one of the best products I've ever seen because it's very light coverage. It's very light as in the weight of it. It feels very airy. It doesn't feel like you have anything on your skin, but it actually gives a tremendous amount of coverage for what it is. And it's one of my favorite foundations of all time. Like I recommend that to pretty much everybody. I think it's a phenomenal product. And I think it's gonna be one of my top drawer products. That's something I'm gonna talk about later. But I, I think that it really is that good. This is beneath all of those in terms of coverage. There's not coverage here. You can still see the rosacea. You can still see it here on my chin. You can still see it here on my nose. It's on the side of my nose right there. Like those things are still there. They're not, they're not hidden. They're not covered, but they're evened out in a way that my skin looks really healthy. And if I didn't have my brows done, cause I do have brow product on and I didn't have some eyeshadow on and a little bit of lip treatment, you might not know that I was wearing anything because that's what it is. It, it really does look like there's nothing, which makes sense in the name Seamless Skin. It absolutely is. I'm very impressed with this product. I have to say I was not inclined to be because the first time I tried it on skin that was not like it was in the, like late in the day and I hadn't washed my face that morning and my skin was like, and I put it on and it didn't, it stuck, like I said, to sort of dry patches and stuff. But when I do my normal routine where I make sure my skin is exfoliated and it looks good and I put on a moisturizer, it looks great. It looks fantastic. So I am very impressed. I still think the T3 is gonna look better. I will make sure that I put something up so you can see that. Yes, the first ingredient is water. So that's that tells you right there, I think, a lot of what you need to know. The shape is similar to the shape of her foundation. You can see. The, the flat on the back, like this one was. The product size, let's see, let's make sure we have 0.30 milliliters, one fluid ounce. That's actually pretty good um, for what this is. It looks like a tiny little bottle, it's, it's one fluid ounce. And 12 months, I think that's great. Definitely shake it up, because if you don't shake it up, it's not, it's not gonna work. It makes it very clear on the box, and she's said it many times. So, um, yeah, I'm very impressed. There is, like I said, the shade matching chart here. On, <laughs> I'm trying to come up with the right word on the page. So it will tell you like what you should get. It's, it, you can look at the pictures, so you can do that, or you can look at the shade matrix. That's what I was looking for. And I looked at what foundation I have. So this is shade seven and shade seven says T3 T5 can be used a color correcting shade to target localized redness and T6 if you prefer a touch more depth. I don't prefer much, I don't want depth. Um, but the T5 I thought was interesting. Um, the T5, she said to get rid of certain parts of, of redness. And the thing about the T5, which is so interesting, is that the T5 has a cool olive undertone. That doesn't, you don't, usually find, you don't find so many foundations that have olive, first of all. 
So that's the first thing. And second of all, an olive undertone, a cool olive, will absolutely get rid of redness because green and red counteract each other. So I am like, I'm waiting for the T3. So I'll, I'll get that and I'll use that on my skin. But if the T3 turns out to be, you know, what I think it's going to be, I will also probably buy the T5 just to see how it works on me in like these areas here where I do get more red to see if that might be a good color correcting product because I could just use that on those areas and then put a foundation over it or just use it in those areas and that's it. Use a little bit of powder. So I'm very intrigued about that and I wanted to mention that to any of you out there who also suffer from rosacea. I think that's an interesting thing that she did because you don't see that very often. Okay, so here's the, the seven. So that was the seven, that was the foundation. And if you see it, I'm just gonna put it over this a little bit. See how you can get a little bit more coverage if you want to, to put a foundation over it, you, you definitely can. Hers or anybody else's, because you can see it covered up the redness in the chin that was still a little bit there. So the T1, if I put it next to it, you'll see it's quite a bit, quite a bit lighter. There's T1, there's foundation seven. So you can see that the T1 is, if you're, if you have Lisa Eldridge foundation and seven works for you or you like seven, then the T1 is gonna be very much lighter and, and cooler, pinker. So when I get the, when I get the T3, I will definitely either do a post on Instagram or I'll have it on my Patreon. I'll, I'll try to put it as many places as possible, maybe on the community page so you guys can see it. But product wise, it's one of those products that's similar to the Dolce Gabbana Solar Power powder because it's an evening of your skin tone. It's getting rid of redness. It's making your face look better, but it's not a, it's, it's almost more of a skincare product. And she does say that it's got like 78% skincare in here because honestly, this is a product for those who want their skin to look healthier, to look better, but not to look covered, not to look like your foundation. I don't know, quite honestly, um, I'm looking at a 10X mirror here. I cannot tell. If you look really closely, you can see the foundation on my chin in the 10X. You can't see the skin tint. You cannot see a line. There's nothing. It does not look, honestly, it does not look like there's anything. It just looks like my skin. Really impressed with this. And I'm very glad because I love Lisa Eldridge. I love her skill. And the Seamless Skin Foundation just didn't work for me. I know it works for a lot of other people. It just didn't work for me. And I think it's because my skin is dry. But this works perfectly really thrilled and I would strongly I, I, I think it's a great product if that's what you want if you want something that's going to even out your skin and make it look natural and make it look like you're walking around with the best skin if you're looking even for a tinted moisturizer like the Shiseido like the the YSL new it doesn't even give you that much coverage it's much lighter than that in my opinion that's what it is okay so the pencils this is a departure from what I honestly often think of, or I think a lot of people think of when they think of a lip pencil, okay? So as a makeup artist, when I used to actually do this, when I used to actually do this, you know, as part of my living, I still do it as part of my living, what am I saying? When I used to be a makeup artist for Chanel, the way many makeup artists view their makeup, and I don't wanna speak for everyone, so let me just speak for myself. When I looked at my kit, when I looked at, and I, when I was working for Chanel, obviously it was Chanel products, I never looked at any one product and said, this is what it's for. I personally looked at my products and thought how I could use them to make my client look their best. If it meant putting eyeliner on their lips, I would do that. Because it's just color, right? It's just, now formula, all those things, yes, but it's more like an artist. You're just trying to figure out what paints work what in what way or, or what chalk or what paper. You're being artistic and you just use it any way you want to. But I think a lot of people think of their lip pencil as, oh, the lip pencil has to match your lipstick or your lip pencil has to match the outline of your lip. 
one or the other is the way that I think most people think. And I think most people think my lip liner matches my lipstick. I have rarely done that. I think I talked about the new Chanel lipsticks and I've talked about this before about what matches, what lip liner matches. In my opinion, you use the lip liner and the lipstick together to create something new, to create something unique. Now, if you really do want your lipstick and your lip liner to match, there are, like Lisa Eldridge has those types of products. I have almost all of her lipsticks. I have her lip gloss. So I think there is that, like you, you can absolutely do that. There's other brands that do that too. But for the most part, I generally try to be creative about how I'm mit mat matching up a lip liner and a lipstick. Although again, this is how I would think as the makeup artist. But I also know that the person that I, back in the day that I was selling to was probably not gonna think of it like that. They wanted something that worked. To be honest, mostly it was like, I need something that works for every day, which was usually some sort of beigey nude shade. And then I want something that when I like go out at night, it's brighter. That, you, and again, this was a long time ago, 25 years ago. They were buying one or two lipstick liners, maybe three, maybe. I have, I don't even wanna tell you how many I have. <laughs> Way too many. So I think people are looking for something that's gonna work for them most of the time. And then it's gonna go with the majority of lipsticks that they have and maybe then a red one <laughs> or an orange one that's like different. So that's how I think a lot of people are thinking of lip liners. These, at least from Lisa's perspective, these are skin tones um, that are easy to use and naturally enhancing your lip. So easy to use lip pencils in a, in a nuanced natural lip shade to sculpt and shade your desired lip shape while staying true to your tone. Blurring matte soft coast is finished, effortly blends, uh, no feathering or fading, soft blurred emphasis on your natural lip shape or dramatic depth and de definition. There are four neutrals, three cool, three warm, and in each one of those, basically you're saying, okay, four neutrals are gonna work. The idea of a neutral is that it would work on everybody, whether cool or warm. Three cool, and then three warm. And the warms would flatter and complement warm skin tones. The cool, the cool would be light pink to like rich berry. Those are the three shades. The three warm are peachy light tan to a rich terracotta. And the new basically go zero one to zero, three, um, zero N to three N and would be quote neutral in tone so that everyone can wear them. I did pick up four different shades. I picked up the zero one, the zero N, I don't know if I'm saying that, zero N, one N, the two N, and then the two C, I think it's the two C. They're coming. <laughs> I don't have them all yet. Uh, but I do have the zero N and the one N. So I'm gonna show you those. I will say these pencils remind me a little of MAC pencils, which I actually love. They are a little bit more like a pencil, but they are, what do I mean by a pencil? They're a little drier. They're not super creamy, which is not a bad thing. Hear me out on this one, because the thing about a super creamy lip pencil or eyeliner pencil for that matter, is they smudge and they don't last as long, depending on the formula. So you don't necessarily want something that's super creamy. You want it to glide, but you don't want it to smudge right off or glide right off, or feather for that matter. Okay, so we have zero N, and zero N is, in my opinion, more brown, that's zero N, and then this is one N. And zero N looks like, almost like a mushroomy brown, and then one N has a little bit more pink to it. Again, these are supposed to, they're both neutrals, but that's what I get from these. They do very much remind me of like the Cindy from Sweet Beauty that I've been recently talking about, which I'll show you. They remind me of the Beige Natural from Sicily and the Nude Burn from Chanel. Here's the one from, this is Cindy. You can see it's, this one's a little warmer, but similar types of tones. But the point of these, like I said, is a little bit different. Now, again, as an artist doing your makeup, you yourself or someone else, use these in any way that you see fit. If you want to buy, and like the 2C that I bought, it's gonna to be too deep to enhance my natural skin tone and lip tone. 
one, I wanted to show it to all of you because I'm, I know there's people out there who have much deeper skin tones than I do. So I wanted to show it to you, but also I'm going to use it in a way to mix with a different shade. Sometimes I have lipsticks that are just too warm, too yellow or too beige. If you mix it with something like the 2C, which is like a berry shade from what I could tell, that's the perfect type of liner. And because these are made to sculpt, I think the way that they're designed, they are gonna work really well to keep your lipstick from feathering, to keep your lips from the outline to feather. And it's also gonna give a great sculpted definition to the lips. So whether it's a little bit deeper or not, won't matter because I'm just going to like the product. Now I have used them <laughs> and I do the product. So again, what she means by sculpting your lip shape, you can go with the natural definition of your lip and just enhance that. Or you can go with something and I would do that if you took this like one N or if you took the zero N and do a little bit more of an exaggerated shape. So I'm going to do that on the upper lip. I'm going to do a little bit more of an exaggerated shape. I'm going to use the zero N, which is probably the closest to my skin to show you what she means by sculpted definition. Now you can see already that my top lip looks bigger than it did before. And I haven't even put a lip gloss or anything on it. The reason is, is because the shade looks like it could be the shade of my lip. Like it could be the lip, the outline of your lip on your skin. The one end looks like that as well. When you go to put your lipstick or gloss, whatever else, it's going to look more natural. It's going to look more like, oh, she just has this perfect upper lip instead of she drew it on with a pencil. If you do something with a, a, a shade that's very different from your skin tone, and you, let's say you have a cool skin tone like I do, <coughs> excuse me, and you do something very warm, it might not look as sculpted, it might not look as natural, it's just gonna look like you out drew your lips with lipstick. So I'm gonna put a little bit more on just to get that definition. Now on the lower lip, I'm gonna draw a little bit on, in my lip line because I don't want it to I don't need the puffiness as much on the lower lip as I did on the top lip, but you can see how natural that looks. It doesn't look off. It looks like it could be part of my skin tone. Cause again, this is neutral. I think the one end will look even more natural because it's actually a little bit cooler and my skin's a little bit cooler. And then the two C will be very interesting to see how that works. It will definitely be very deep. Don't get me wrong. We'll see how it works. Now, if you do the inner corners, you're going to get even more dimension. I did not do that. You can blend using like a brush or even your fingers to blur it out. Depends on how you want to do it. So I want to see if there's anything else in here about the lip liner, the sculpt and shade. There are different, there are swatches of the shades. I don't see anything else that you guys absolutely need to know like about it other than it's $28, which is important. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna take, this is Gloss in Awake, which is one of my favorite shades from Lisa Eldridge. And I'm just gonna put it on so you can see how the liner works with a, a gloss or a lipstick. Now I did pick a shade that is neutral and slightly a little bit warm, but I think you can see my lips definitely look bigger than they are in nature. And this is a trick that you know makeup artists have used for years for outer line their lips. And you can get more definition if you're gonna like line through here too, but I just wanted to give you the idea. So that works really well. It looks very natural. It doesn't look like I did as much outer lining than I did. And I've done it a lot. Like you can see some of my pictures where my lips look like this. <laughs> no, my lips look normal. Now I do have fuller lips. No, it's not filler. They've, I've always had them. In fact, I disliked them intensely when I was younger, but it, this will work on any size lip that you have. It's just going to depend on how you decide to, to line them. If you want to be really defined or you want to blur it out more. Uh, and you can just use these liners by themselves, by the way. Just take the liner, fill in your lip with it, blot it, you're done. Now let's take a look at the mascara and 
the liner, I won't spend as long on this because obviously these aren't brand new products, but you've got the Kitten Flick liner. So I generally don't wear liquid liner. The only liquid liner that I've ever really become obsessed with was the Tom Ford double ended liner. That one I still think is phenomenally good. I just don't wear it very often because I don't wear liquid liner. I used to wear it a lot more when I was younger. Now that I'm older, I just don't wear it as often. The Suku ones are really good. The Valentino ones are excellent. But like I said, I just don't, I don't use it very often. All right, let's try. I'm gonna pull my eye up a little because skin is not as tight as it used to be and see what we can do here to go like that. Okay. Yeah, that is actually pretty thin. And it even works without pulling the skin, which is saying something. All right, I need more practice with it, but still. Okay, mascara. It is a little bit of a curved brush. I do like a curved brush, but it, this is one of those prickly things again, which I've actually started to like because the Sweet Beauty also has one like this, and I love that one. It's not as prickly, but still, it's pretty freaking amazing. All right, Lifting Defining Mascara for Fluffy Framed Out Lashes, $36. All right, so I'm going to do a close-in on my lashes right now so you can see them, and then I'll put it on one eye, and we can see the difference between one eye and the other, but I'm not going to make you sit here. I might fast-forward it while I put on mascara, but my eyelashes, let's push these back where they were. Okay, my lashes right now. Okay, so I'm back on camera. And I have to say, like, I look lopsided. This eye looks so different than this eye. And this is what people talk about when they say makeup is cheating, because my eye shape looks different. This mascara is really good. It's really good. I like it. It definitely is more of like a feathery lash look. It's lengthening. I wouldn't say it's volumizing. It's lengthening. The Swede is more both in my opinion. I, so I like this weed a little bit more, but I would say with this type of tint, skin enhancer, whatever we really want to call it, I even think the gloss is too much. Like I know that sounds weird, but like I feel like with the enhancing tint, what I would do is I would wear this enhancing tint with a lip balm, maybe even like the sculpting pencil and a lip balm, like just with no shade in it, or maybe one of the, I don't know, something really light that didn't really look like I had anything on my lips. And then this type of mascara actually would work really well if you wanted to wear a mascara because it's feathery. It's pretty and it's light a little bit. It's definitely lengthening, don't get me wrong, but I think it has, I think it, it has more of that natural look a little bit. So let me do the other eye so I stop looking lopsided and we'll come right back. Okay, back, final look. Like I said, I feel much more comfortable now because I'm balanced. The enhancing tint, it's fantastic. It looks really good. I do feel a little pale at the moment um, because like I said, I don't think the T1 is my right shade. I think it's T3. When I have it, I'll make sure I wear it on camera so you guys can see it. But the formula is excellent. It sinks right in. It looks absolutely seamless. Doesn't look like you're wearing anything. Evens everything out. Makes your skin look less red for me. Less red, less uneven. Makes you look like you'd want to look if you weren't wearing makeup, this is, I would love to be able to look like this with nothing on my face. It's the goal. The lip liners, really like the lip liners. I think they're really good. They are sculpting, enhancing lip liners, shaping lip liners. Like I said, I have the, the zero N and the one N. I think they're really good. Sorry, zero N and one N. I think they're really good for what they're trying to be. They're good pencils. They don't bleed. So when you put them on and you have a product like a gloss, they are going to act as a barrier. If you put the gloss around it though, make sure you keep it within the confines of the liner. Just putting that out there. Yeah, they work really well. I picked up 2N and I think 2C. I can't really remember right now, but anyway, when I get them, I'll make sure I show you those as well. And I'll continue to wear the other shade, um, 1N, so you can see that as well. But they're really good neutral shades. I think these two are really great. This was the Swede. Cindy just didn't want to show you his comparison. The mascara is a fluttery, lovely mascara. It works really well. I think it goes on. 
nicely. It's not super wet. It's a little bit drier. It is a prickly brush. It is a little bit curved. It hits every lash. Definitely lengthens. You saw it when I had, you know, nothing on the other eye. It's more of that feathery, fluttery kind of look. So if that's what you're looking for, how it works throughout the day and whether or not it smudges, I'll have an update for you because I, I don't know right now. The liner is really thin. I think it's really good. It does remind me of the um, Valentino. In fact, I think it's a little bit better. And one thing I want to test out is to see how it works when you like, so I don't know if you've ever seen people draw like lashes on, but that's an interesting way to tell if this is actually something that works really well in regards to a thin line. And it does. Now I'm not suggesting you do this in real life because it, it, if you see it up close, you can tell there's like liner, but this has been done for editorial for a long time. You can be very pronounced with it or you can be like really light with it, but you're basically drawing on your lashes and you can do that. The liner like this, just to put in like little strokes. Now that's really hard to do unless you have a very thin pencil, I'm sorry, liner. And this one works really well. I didn't want to do it until I already had mascara on, but you see how it made me look like I had more lashes than I have. Now you could do it. I'm not telling you not to do it and go out, but you can see that somebody, if you get close, you can see that I drew lines on, but again, it was for editorial purposes. It doesn't matter, but it does give you more of that full lash look. Used to do it a lot in the sixties where they would draw on obvious lash lines. Yeah, these are all great products. My favorite is the new enhancing tint. It's very different. It's not what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a tinted moisturizer. It's not, it's a s enhancing tint, enhances your skin, makes your skin look better. I like the way she put it where you would see your skin on its best day. That's what this is. Great product. I'll have the T3. Um, I'll make sure I'll show that to all of you as soon as I have it. And I'm thinking about the T5. So if anyone has a T5 out there, let me know what you think, um, what your thoughts are. Overall though, all great products, depending on what you know, the mascara and the liner, what you like. Like I said, I don't wear liquid liner very often. So I won't probably use this that often, but for people who do want a really precise liquid liner, this one's really good. It's really great. And this is excellent and easy to pack, by the way, for people who are, traveling all the time. So I'm looking forward to all your questions. I'd love to hear what you picked up, if anything, what you're thinking of picking up. Hopefully some of this was helpful to all of you. And like I said, once I have the T3 in hand and the other liners, I'll definitely make sure you see them. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you in another video really soon.